Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Long time no see. I've not uploaded a video in quite a while. I was just taking a break. I appreciate all of your messages and comments, but I thought what better way to come back than with a Sephora haul. These are some of my favorite videos to film and you know, even if I'm not uploading, I'm still buying all the new products. I also wanted to say thank you to Sephora for sponsoring this video. I always love working with them because honestly, it's probably my top retailer that I shop at. Now, if you're you're not already a member of the Sephora Beauty Insider program, you can sign up completely free. Being a member comes with perks like access to shop the savings events, free gifts, samples, and shipping perks as well. There are also three tiers in the program, so the more you shop, the more perks you get. We have the Rouge members, which would be me, the VIB members, and then the Insiders. So I will leave a link at the top of my description box to become a Beauty Insider member. Highly recommend doing so. I will also also link everything that I haul today down below in my description box. So if there's anything that you want to check out or you want to shop, you can check the links down below. Of course, everything is available at Sephora. So I think that's everything that I wanted to go over. Happy to be back, excited to show you what I picked up. As always, if you're new here, I hope you stick around and subscribe. I do a ton of makeup content. If you enjoy Sephora hauls or you're just happy I'm back, give this video a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get into what I picked up from Sephora. Okay, let's start off with some smell good products. I'm a huge fan of Sol de Janeiro, the Boom Boom scent I love. And they came out with this body oil. This is supposed to be firming and de-bloating, which I was like, hello, what? But honestly, I really purchased it because I love the scent of the Boom Boom cream. I have the shower gels, I have the dry shampoo, the lotion, I have everything. So I did test this the other day. It's a very thin oil, so it's not thick, but it definitely is gonna give you that nice hydration. But this, I feel like, is gonna be really popular in the summertime, just because it does give you that nice glow. It smells absolutely incredible. I love the packaging, and it does have a pump that it comes with. I am curious to see if I notice any firming of the skin the more I use this, but honestly, I'd be happy just with the hydration and the smell because I just love the Boom Boom scent that much. Speaking of smelling yummy, I did pick up the new Nest Rollerball Oil Fragrance. So this is the Balanese Coconut. Anything coconut, I'm all in. And I have had good luck with the Nest fragrances. They are a perfume oil. You can get them in a larger size or the Rollerball. So this is a fresh solar. The keynotes are coconut, solar, frangipani, and creamy sandalwood. This gives me fresh, coconut, but also a little bit of a unisex vibe. It's not overly sweet. It has like a fresh, almost masculine sort of vibe, which I really like. It's a little bit different for me because I usually go for like intensely sweet. I think it's really beautiful and it's not sharp or off-putting. I can't do really floral heavy scents because I instantly get a headache from them. So I do prefer something that sort of melts into the skin. So if you're looking for a summer type scent that isn't overly sunscreen-like or citrus, I think this would be a great option because because it's fresh, it has that musky vibe to it, but it's a little bit different than most of these summer scents on the market. Okay, so the next thing I picked up is a lip balm that I know I love. I was scrolling the Sephora website, as I do, and I saw this and I was like, whoa, added to cart immediately. So you guys know I love the K-Skin SPF 30 Isle Lip Balm. It's one of my favorites. It originally came in clear. It's almost like a lip oil slash balm hybrid, so it gives you that beautiful shine, but it has an SPF and it hangs on. So they came out with new shades. I picked up the color Bad Gal Berry, but this is like really pigmented. I haven't tried it on my lips yet, but look at the pigment on this. I'm always saying that I love like lip oils, but I want a little bit more pigment, and this is giving me that vibe. Of course, you could sheer it out, but I love that it has a bang. So when you put it on the lips, you're gonna get that beautiful tint, but also that SPF and that moisture, and these smell so good. 
They're like vanilla, just delicious. So if you're looking for an SPF lip balm that's actually functional but beautiful and doesn't just slip off in a second, definitely check out the K-Skin. There's another color as well that I'm eyeing. So there's like the clear and then two colors, but I had to get the one that had the most pigment. Along with the K-Skin lip balm, I did get another shade of the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm. So I picked up Vanilla Beige. I had seen a lot of people talking about this. So originally I got the brighter shade, and this is something that I like to use very similar to the K-Skin, although this doesn't have an SPF, just as a almost tinted lip oil. So I really love the shade that I got originally because it has that really beautiful bright color. This is definitely more of a nude, but I would say the texture is pretty similar to the K-Skin, although the K-Skin is a little bit more sticky, hangs on a little bit more, but I love that this actually has a tint to it. I've said this so many times with lip balms or lip oils being clear. This actually has a nice pigment to it. Of course, you could sheer it out, it smells really good too. It smells very similar to the K-Skin. So I'm happy to have a nude shade in my collection. I feel like I'd seen so many people rave about this color in particular, although I'm always gonna have a special spot in my heart for the bright shades, like that poppy shade I think it's called. Highly recommend if you're looking for a really beautiful everyday balm that also has pigment. These are really, really nice. Next up, I picked up two different highlighters that everybody was talking about, super excited about. The first being the Rare Beauty. So I got the shade Exhilarate, and this, the packaging, everything about this is just so beautiful. Highlighters are something that I feel like I have, you know, enough to last me a lifetime, but there was something about this that really drew me in, and I think a lot of people as well. It's almost like that baked soft gelée sort of texture, but it's really beautiful. So it's not powdery at all, no glitter, at least in this shade, and it gives you that nice shine. That's what I like. I don't really like glitter falling all over or chunky formulas. I know there are four different shades and I did end up receiving the other ones in PR, but I'm excited to try this. I know I'm late to the game, but I feel like everybody loves this, so I definitely had to get my hands on it, and this is a beautiful gold shade. I really like neutral colors for my highlighter, so this release honestly just called to me. And then I wasn't gonna pick this up, I got sucked in and I did pick up one of the Charlotte Tilbury highlighters. So these are the Glow Glide Face Architect highlighters. I picked up the shade Champagne Glow and I'm wearing it today. Now this is a true, you can see that it's spinning because these are refillable, I believe, but this is a true powder formula. So it does have that sort of powder feel until you really buff it into the skin. But you can see that you get a really beautiful high shine finish and it's really not a dusty formula. It's pretty hard pressed in the pan so you're not going to get powder flying all over, but I didn't find it hard to pick up with a brush, which was nice. It's kind of like right in the middle and it does have a nice creaminess to it. So I think this is a beautiful highlighter. Did I need both? No, but you know, when you're on Sephora, you just add things to cart. Also, I figured you guys would want some reviews. Even though I'm really late to the game, I do plan on using all these products in trying to make a video. So along with the highlighters, I got this blush that everybody's going nuts about. I knew I had to get it immediately when I saw it. This is the Cloud Crush Blurring Blush from Too Faced in the color Candy Clouds. This is a Babs color if we ever saw one. So this is interesting because it has like a soft blur type feel to it. I do almost feel like it has a little bit of that pH sort of vibe similar to the Dior blush where it's really soft and you can kind of blend it into your skin and then it warms up. This is a very light pink baby pink. So I've noticed that sometimes it's a little bit light, so I do add a little bit of a punchier option like back here. And then I use this similar to the Dior like over my nose and just kind of around the edges. So I think it's really beautiful. You know that I'm always down for a baby pink blush. They do also have a bunch of other colors that I'm interested to try. So I will be reviewing those soon, but if you've been eyeing this shade in particular and you like baby pink blushes like I do, I think you'll really enjoy this. 
Next up, I also picked up a few products from Sephora Collection. I saw these little palettes and I knew I had to try at least one. So these are the Sephora Collection Color Shifter Palettes. These are only $10 each. So I'm wearing this one right now. This is called the Infinite Nude Palette. So inside you get five shades. We have three mattes, a topper, and then a metallic. The mattes in here are super buttery, very pigmented, and then the metallic is more of like a satin. It's not overly intense, but then you do have the topper, which looks almost marbled, and the topper is definitely more of like a chunky feel. It really does a better job if you really sort of blend it out, and then you can see that shine. But I was really impressed specifically with the matte shades in here. Very, very soft, pigmented, and blended beautifully. And then I did also get another color. This one is called Unlimited Mauve. So this is like the purple color. So it has like a little strap on the front. And then when you open it up, you can see the shades. So I've not even swatched this one. Let's swatch the topper. Okay, that's really beautiful. So you have the topper three mattes, which again, they just swatch really nicely. And then let's swatch the metallic shade. So again, the metallics are sort of like a satin metallic, but I think that's really why they have the topper in there as well. So if you're looking for a really affordable, high quality palette, I think these are really cute. You do get a mirror as well. And like I said, $10, which is crazy good. So I'm really interested to keep trying these out. I've used the nude one a few times so far. And again, the mattes really stand out to me. The topper definitely needs to be worked in. And then the metallic is a little bit more satin. But I think for the price, there was, I think, five different colorways as well or color options. There was one that had green in it that I feel like a lot of people would like. So I think these are really cute, especially for the price. And then I did also pick this up. I finally got my hands on it, although I really did want the lighter color. But this is the Sephora Collection Micro Smooth baked face palette. So my friend Cheryl is always raving about the lighter tone and I think she did get the darker one or she wanted to. So I finally got my hands on this. So you have a highlighter, then you have two blushes. One is really glowy and then you have a bronzer. So this is the deeper palette. So here are the four colors. Definitely a little bit deep for my skin tone, but I will definitely use the blushes and then just use the highlighter if I need to for like eyeshadow. But the blushes look really pretty. The one is like glowy but subdued. And then the one down here, it's almost like a highlighter blush hybrid. So she's raved about them and this is super affordable as well. I really am excited to see what other products Sephora Collection comes out with just because I feel like they have some hidden gems and they're always very affordable. Okay, next I want to talk about a new brand to Sephora that I immediately was looking at and added to cart. I do believe it is a black owned brand, so they have deeper complexion products, but I picked up some of their other products and I'm really impressed. So let's start off with this mascara. This is from the brand Amy Cole. I love the packaging. It's very simplistic and this is the Lash Amplifying Mascara. This is so just lengthening and volumizing. I have been using this every day since I got it. I love the formula. It's a drier formula, but it's not one that you have to build a million layers. And the wand is very thin, but it's still a bristle formula, so it's not one of those like pokey plastic ones. I have been so impressed with this. This makes my lashes look crazy long, crazy voluminous, and I think the price point on these products is really, really good. Sort of in the realm of like LYS beauty good. So so highly recommend checking this out. And then I did end up getting two lip oils. I had to. So I originally got this one and then I saw this one pop up and I was like, oh, okay, I need it. So these are the lip treatment oils and I have the color Bliss. And then the newer one is called Smitten. So these actually have a little bit of pigment to them. They are pretty sticky. So if you don't like sticky, I don't think you would like these solely because these definitely have a tack to them. The smell, 
I feel like it's a light, maybe vanilla scent, but this is the first shade called Bliss, which is like a pinky sort of tone. And then the newer one that just popped up, it's giving me like neon jelly vibes. This one is called Smitten. Oh my gosh. <gasps> this in the summertime with like bronzed skin is going to be stunning. I knew I had to have this one. They have a similar look to let's say like the Tower 28 jelly glosses, but thicker and they really hang on. So they don't really feel like a lip oil, more like a thicker lip gloss, but I'm all about it. They give that beautiful high shine finish with that jelly look, this shade in Smitten. This and the mascara I'm like super excited about. So definitely check this brand out, especially if you have a deeper complexion. They had a ton of products that were really solely focused on deeper skin tones, which we love to see. Now, along with that new brand, I saw quite a few new lip products pop up. So I did pick up the Tower 28 Lip Liner. This is the one liner, so it's supposed to be good for like your eyes, your lips, wherever you wanna use it. And I got the color Draw Me. I know this isn't brand new, but it is new to Sephora. This feels a little bit dark, so I may end up using this more so on my eyes. But I really wanted to try this. I'd seen quite a few people talk about this. So I went ahead and grabbed this. It feels really creamy. And then the lip liner that I'm wearing right now that I'm pretty impressed with and I feel like I want another shade is the one size lip liner. So this is the Lip Snatcher and I got the color Rent Due. He just names these things the craziest thing. So what do you know, it's a brown, but this is more my speed. This is one of those that initially, it's very dry and sharp, but as I used it, it really does become, I would say very comparable to let's say the Pat McGrath lip liners, a little bit more pigmented, but it's in that sort of formula realm. I've been wearing this lip liner for probably two or three hours. It's not bunching up or doing anything weird, which is pretty hard to find. A lot of times lip liners that are very pigmented almost get sticky and they start bunching up. This hasn't done that. I am really impressed with this. So I do think I'm gonna go back for a couple more shades. And then along with that, he did release these new lip duos. So this is the Lip Snatcher Duo. So you have a liquid lipstick on one side and then a gloss on the other. I love the packaging. It feels really nice and weighted. So I got the color Trade Finder. It was a little bit difficult to figure out what shade would work for me. And looking at this shade, I feel like it's gonna be maybe a little warm. It really has that like orange peachy undertone. It's a little bit orangey for me personally. And then on this side, you have the cushion gloss. Now this is interesting because it looks pretty intensely glittery. Now it feels smooth when you, you know, apply it, but it does have quite a bit of glitter in it and I'm wondering if that's going to come off a little bit like frosty. I'm gonna apply just a little bit, like the tiniest amount. The formula feels nice, it's not super sticky but it has a little bit of thickness to it. So I feel like when you do just a little bit in the center, you're gonna get that really beautiful shine. But looking at it swatched, it's quite glittery. Like I can't imagine putting this all over. I feel like it would look a little bit too frosty metallic. So I'll have to look more into the shades of this. I think the concept is really nice. Oh, I guess I could put this on top to show you what it looks like on top of the lipstick. This is giving me Chanel vibes. So this is what it looks like. It reminds me of the Chanel lipsticks where the matte dries all the way down and then you put the gloss on top to give you that comfort. So I'm interested to try this on. I just wish the shade wasn't quite so warm. And for my final lip product, I did grab one of the new shades of the wet lip oils from Kosas. So I was scrolling and a few more shades popped up. So I got the color Revealed. I feel like I've tried this formula, but I can't really recall. And I felt like a lot of the shades from what I remember were too sheer. This looked like it had a really pretty pigment and it does. So this is a lip oil 
but really it feels sort of like a gloss oil to me. Not overly sticky or thick, but I love the color of this. This reminds me of the Sephora collection Plumping Gloss in 7 that I really like. This is my type of color. They also had, I think, like a more brown nude, and then they had like a sparkly iridescent. This is something that I will get a lot of use out of. I really tend to like glosses that are either super high shine and like popsicle-like, like this one, or really light colors that kind of lighten the center of my lips, and this will do the trick. So I'm excited to try this. If you've tried this formula, I'd love to know your thoughts down below. All right, so to finish off this haul, I have two more products. This one I had seen almost go viral, I wanna say, a while ago, and I somehow never tried this. So this is the Skin Corrector Stick from Bobbi Brown. I got the color Light Bisque. So when it comes to under eye correctors, my favorite probably has to be the Charlotte Tilbury, but I had heard so many good things about this, so I want to swatch it. It doesn't feel overly emollient, which is nice, and it does look like it has almost like a little bit of a hydrated feel to it. I know a lot of people really raved about this, and I want to play around more with applying a little bit of something like this in the inner corner so that I don't have to use as much concealer, but really give me that brightness and cover up the blue veining on my under eye. So I finally got this. I feel like I had tried multiple times and it was out of stock. And then lastly, I saw this and I love products like this, so I wanted to give it a go. This is the Bondi Boost Flyaway Fix Wand. So this is essentially a clear mascara wand for your baby hairs. I have a ton of baby hairs, breakage, and doing slicked back styles is so difficult for me. My baby hairs and breakage just like poof right out. So this one's interesting because it's not very intense in terms of hold, which can be a good or bad thing, but it doesn't leave that crunchy feel. So sometimes when they don't leave a crunchy feel, it's definitely easier to brush through and more comfortable overall, but sometimes you don't get the hold. So I'll have to keep trying this out. I've only played with it very, very quickly, and I haven't used it enough to really know, but this type of product I truly cannot live without because I really do have like all these little baby hairs and breakage, especially like right here and right here that I have to slick back. All right guys, so I think that's everything I picked up from Sephora recently. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know if you've tried any of these products or what you wanna see me review first. As always, I will link all of the products down below in my description box so you can shop through those links if you wanna check anything out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna stick around and subscribe, I would love to have you. As always, thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.